Transporter 3, 2008. The movie commences with a ship navigating the ocean. Two laborers mistakenly believe they are transporting alcohol and decide to sneak a taste. Upon opening a container, they discover numerous drums. Accidentally, one drum topples over, prompting them to lift it. However, upon opening it, they are met with a surge of toxic waste. As an alarm blares, the captain and crew quickly don gas masks. Discovering the two workers deceased next to the open drum, the captain orders their bodies tossed overboard. Meanwhile, Malcolm David Atraki steers his car toward a police checkpoint. A police officer requests his passport, which Malcolm promptly provides. The officer notices a woman asleep in the back seat, and Malcolm explains that she's fatigued from partying the night before. Satisfied, the cop allows Malcolm to pass through the checkpoint. Frank Martin, Jason Statham, and Inspector Tarconi, Francois Berlind, enjoy a boring day of fishing in the ocean. They are at the spot that Tarconi used to fish with his father, and is surprised that they haven't had any bites yet. Eventually, Tarconi gets a bite and Frank gets all excited, telling him to fight for the fish. Elsewhere, Malcolm gets to another police checkpoint and shows his papers to a cop. However, the cop tells Malcolm to get out of the car and bring his papers inside so that they can inspect it. He also tells him that the woman in the back needs to come inside as well. Malcolm looks nervous and then he winds up speeding past the checkpoint. The cops chase Malcolm through the streets, but wind up crashing into a van. Tarconi, after losing the fish, gets the call about the chase and is surprised that Frank was not the driver. He tells Frank that he's going to have to cut their fishing day short, and they depart just as Frank gets a bite. At the airport, Johnson, Robert Nepper, and his men arrive in a private jet. When asked what his purpose is in the country, Johnson says that he's there for environmental protection. During this time, we see Minister Leonid Vasilev, Yeroon Krab, talking with reporters about his plan to help save the environment. Vasilev goes into his office and finds a confidential envelope waiting on his desk. The envelope starts to ring, and he finds a cell phone inside. Johnson is on the other end of the line, and is watching Vasilev from across the street. Johnson works for a company that Vasilev refused to do business with since they would cause harm to the environment. Johnson has been hired to convince him to reconsider and tells him to look at the picture inside the envelope. Vasilev is shocked by what he sees, and Johnson tells him that he'll be in contact with him. At night, Frank falls asleep watching a fishing show on TV at his house. He wakes up and hears tires screeching. Suddenly, a car crashes into his house. The driver is Malcolm, and he is bloodied from the crash and having been shot. As Frank recognizes him, we see a flashback to when he was approached for a job. Frank declined, and instead gave the man Malcolm's name and number to contact. The man was adamant that his boss wanted Frank because he's the best and wouldn't take no for an answer. Frank tried to leave, but became surrounded by henchmen in a room with a piano in it. They tried to make him reconsider, but Frank took off his jacket and beat the crap out of them all. Back to the present, Frank calls an ambulance to get help for Malcolm who refuses to get out of the car. Frank sees that he has a metal device strapped around his wrist, and the paramedics show up. Malcolm, weak, tries to tell them something about the car, but the paramedics load him into the ambulance and start to drive away. Frank inspects the car and then sees Valentina, Natalia Rudikova, in the backseat. He tries to get her to get out of the car so that he can help her, but she shows him that she's also wearing a metal device. Frank realizes that something's wrong and runs after the ambulance. After a certain distance, the ambulance explodes. He goes back into his house and is immediately knocked out by someone. When Frank wakes up, he finds himself in a room wearing nothing but his underwear and a metal device around his wrist. He finds a suit in the closet and puts it on. Johnson walks in and says that he would like to hire him for a job, since Malcolm, his replacement, failed. Frank maintains that he's unavailable. Becoming annoyed with a henchman, Johnson shoots him in the forehead and then points the gun at Frank. He tells him that he has three seconds to accept the job or help kill him. Frank has no choice but to take the job, under the condition that he drives his own car. Johnson had a feeling that he would want his car, and so he leads Frank to a garage. Johnson has had his men take out all the weapons from the car and has installed his own GPS. He also gives him a wad of cash for gas slash food, and a cell phone that will only call Johnson's number. He tells Frank to think of this as more of a mission, and tells him to not disappoint. 
He also mentions that the metal device around his wrist is a bomb, and if he gets more than 75 feet away from the car, he'll explode. He'll be released after completing the mission. Frank is about to get in when he sees that Valentina is sitting in the passenger seat. He says that he works alone, but says that he'll take the girl when Johnson threatens to kill her. He gets into the car and, after loading two bags into the trunk, tells Frank to get driving. Meanwhile, Tarconi arrives at Frank's house and wonders what the hell happened there. He has his cops set up a crime scene, and a cop tows away Malcolm's car. However, the tow truck is blocked off by a car, and the cop is shot through the windshield. The gunman remove the GPS from Malcolm's car and drive off. After getting through a police checkpoint, Frank calls Johnson, and he tells him to punch in a code for the GPS. The next location he will have to go is Budapest, Hungary. Frank repeatedly tries to get Valentina to talk to him about what's going on, but she refuses. Meanwhile, Tarconi has found the tow truck and the dead cop inside. He reviews video footage from the tow truck and sees who the gunmen were. He also sees their license plate and has his cops try to find them. Frank drives off the chosen path and Johnson is made aware of it, since his men are tracking the car. Johnson sends some henchmen to persuade Frank to get back on course but warns his men not to kill him since they need him. Frank drives to a garage owned by his friend Otto, Timo Dierks, who's also a tech whiz. He shows Otto the bomb around his wrist and asks him if he can remove it. Otto can't, and says that he knows the Pentagon has been working on something like it in secret. He says that there's a transmitter somewhere in the car, and then Johnson's goons show up. Frank orders Otto to search his car for the transmitter while the henchmen order Frank to get driving. They grab wrenches and poles, and attack Frank. As he beats his way through the men, Frank takes off his clothes and uses them as weapons. Eventually, he winds up shirtless and a giant henchman shows up. He throws Frank through a wall and beats him up. Frank tries to fight back, but his punches slash kicks seem to hardly have any effect on him. The giant winds up getting stuck in the floor, and Frank bashes his head with a shovel. As Frank gets dressed, Valentina has obviously become attracted to him and helps straighten his tie. Otto finds the transmitter, but if he removes it the bombs will go off. Frank and Valentina drive away. I know.